just covered genetic development and we left off with a little teaser about what's to come next by talking about monozygotic and dizygotic twins and talking about when the egg and the sperm form together, they form a zygote. Just a little bit of clue what we're going to see in the next section on pregnancy. So when we talk about a pregnancy, it's important for us to get over some of the language hurdles that are in our way. We know that when we talk about the parent who is pregnant, we tend to talk about the parent who is pregnant for 40 weeks. And that is because the way we count the start of a pregnancy really starts off as before conceptions even occurred. We tend to count the length of a pregnancy starting from the parent's last menstrual cycle. So clearly there's no pregnancy going on at that point in time, but that's when we start to count it. So we add the two weeks before when we hypothetically think fertilization and conception occurred. And so because of that, it's gonna be 40 weeks long, and we tend to divide that into three segments known as the trimesters. And the trimesters tend to characterize what the parent is experiencing on the outside. First trimester, there may be a lot of nausea and a lot of fatigue. Second semester, things might be good, there might be a lot of energy. And the third trimester, that's when the fatigue and the back aches start to come back. And so that makes sense when we're looking at the parent's point of view. So from that student's point of view, this doesn't happen over a 40 week period. Instead, we tend to talk about gestational age. And the gestational age of the offspring is developing over a 38 week period in the womb. Now for the first two weeks, a very short two week period, we're gonna talk about the offspring as a zygote. And the zygote is really a cluster of cells that are not yet specialized. Then for about two and a half months, we're gonna talk about the offspring as an embryo. An embryo is, doesn't quite look like a human, and doesn't quite look like a ball. It's really when we transition between looking like a ball to kind of looking like a worm or a lizard, and then eventually into a more humanoid form. And the period of the embryo is really when our cells start to specialize and we start to develop our major organs and our limbs and all of those details. And then for six months of the pregnancy, we actually refer to the offspring as a fetus. A fetus looks pretty humanoid, but it's much smaller and underdeveloped. And the period of the fetus is when there's a lot of specialization going on. Maturation of the respiratory system, the neurological system, the digestive system, the cardiovascular system, and putting on lots of body fat to help regulate temperature. And so there's different functions associated with the periods of the zygote, embryo, and fetus. And so the zygote is really just about division of cells, embryo is about specialization, and fetus is about maturation. Now it's important to understand that not all conception will lead to the end of the fetus, and to understand how this works, we're really going to talk about human conception in detail. So from conception to birth, things are really quite a miracle. We know that if an ovulating person has a roughly 28 day cycle for ovulation, they tend to release an egg around day 19 or 16 in their cycle. So if day one is the first day of a menstrual period, the ovulation occurs somewhere between day nine and day 16. And when that egg is released, it only lives for somewhere between 24 and 48 hours. This means that an ovulating person who ovulates on a regular cycle is only actually fertile for two days out of a 28 day cycle. So it's not going to happen at any time. We also know that if conception happens, if sperm meets egg, only 25% of the time will that zygote actually successfully implant in the uterine wall and lead to a pregnancy that can be picked up by a pregnancy test. 75% of the time, even when sperm meets egg, the zygote does not successfully attach or implant to the uterine wall and the person receives their menstrual cycle and doesn't even know they're pregnant. We tend to call that a chemical pregnancy. Although it did meet, it wasn't a viable pregnancy. There's no way for that zygote to stick to the wall. And of those 25% of the times when the zygote does implant in the wall and the parent does receive a positive pregnancy test, an additional 15% of those cases will lead to a miscarriage. And so miscarriages more often happen in the stage of the embryo. We'll explain why in a little bit. Um, but miscarriage is something that can definitely happen, leading to our chances of actually becoming pregnant full term pretty slim. In fact, just a hypothetical example here, but using the probabilities I had at hand, and out of those 200 couples that all have intercourse and attempt to start a family, only 14 of them will be fertile. 
Out of the 14 that are fertile, only four of them will successfully conceive. And because we're rounding in whole numbers here, we're not talking about portions of a couple, out of those four couples, only one couple will successfully implant, have a positive pregnancy test, will not miscarry or have a stillborn, and will have the child live to their fifth birthday. So we think about two calendar couples all you know, going out and enjoying a Saturday night, and only one of them will lead to a full-term pregnancy. That is a low probability, but it's important to understand this is just if things were completely random. There could be other factors at play that could increase or decrease someone's probability. So now that we talked a little bit about conception, it's important for us to talk about this first stage of pregnancy, the period of the zygote. So the zygote is really what we're talking about, this ball of cells, it's not specialized yet. So what's going on here is when a person ovulates, they release their ovum from their ovaries and fertilization does not occur in the uterus. Fertilization actually occurs in the fallopian tubes. So in order to get a successful pregnancy, the ovum needs to be fertilized in the fallopian tubes, but has to continue moving down the fallopian tubes. It's very important for the ovum to continue. If the ovum were attempting to implant in the fallopian tubes, this would not lead to a sustainable or viable pregnancy. There's no way for that to lead uh, to life. And um, that's because the fallopian tubes are not going to stretch. They don't have the resources that the uterus has, and that could actually cause a fatality in the parent and the offspring. And so we want to see, as the ovum is fertilized, we want to see it now turn into a zygote as the sperm and egg merge. We want to see it transition down and then go into the uterus where it now implants itself in the uterine wall. So this is a two week period. When we talk about the period of the zygote, we tend to talk about it day to day. We tend to count it in terms of the number of days. And it happens at a pretty rapid uh, scale. And we tend to talk about two big events, the fertilization, and the implantation. So with regards to fertilization, this happens in the fallopian tube, and this is when egg meets sperm, or sperm meets egg. And about 24 hours after sperm meets egg, this is when the chromosomes in the sperm and the egg combine. So those 23 chromosomes in the sperm and the 23 chromosomes in the egg, this is when they start to combine and they start to get reconfigured, and they're going to make the DNA for the offspring. About 36 hours, this is when the zygote will split from one cell into two cells. And then about 48 hours after fertilization, this is when it's going to split from two to four. But three days after fertilization, it's now a ball of 16 to 32 cells. Uh, this actually has 32 little circles. I, I did count as I placed them. And about four days after fertilization, we can now refer to the zygote as a blastocyst. A blastocyst is a ball of approximately a hundred or more cells. None of these cells are yet to specialize. They're all just sort of stem cells that could all have the potential to become anything at this point. And this is what we're looking at about four days after fertilization. Then after fertilization, the next big event is implantation. So five days after fertilization, this is when our zygote has now reached the end of the fallopian tube. It's coming into the uterus. And by day six or day seven, now it's going to attach itself to the uterine wall. Keep in mind, it's continuing to grow. It now has way more than 100 cells, and it's getting bigger and bigger and more diversified all the time. So around day seven, this is when it'll attach itself to the uterine wall, and we'll start to see communication between the parent and the offspring. And that is when there is really some relay of information in the blood vessels. This could start anywhere around day seven, but it tends to be complete somewhere around day 12 or day 14 in the period of the zygote. And what happens is once it's complete, there's enough communication between the zygote and the parent's blood cells that it sends a signal to the parent's pituitary gland in the brain, which then triggers hormones. And the parent's body tends to produce loss of HCG, which is the specialized hormone, which is what causes a positive on a home pregnancy test. So the HCG is only possible once the zygote's been there and has fully burrowed into the uterine wall. Some individuals can get a positive pregnancy test on day seven after fertilization, and some can't get it until day 14 or even beyond as the HCG grows. And so this HCG is also what triggers lots of the physiological reactions in the parent experiencing the pregnancy, like nausea, for instance. And so around day 14, what we can find is in our little blastocyst, we're finally starting to see the beginnings of some specialization. And the first notion of specialization here is what we call the germ disk. 
So now this little blastocyst it has way more than 100 cells now. Some of the cells look a little bit darker and they're often off to the little side. And what happens is this is the component of the blastocyst that has the potential to turn into an embryo. The entire blastocyst does not become an embryo. The lighter portions of the blastocyst will become support organs or support systems. But the part that could become the offspring is the darker part. And so this, this is the part that will germinate into a potential offspring. So that is the period of the zygote.